Welcome, everyone, to the Baccalaureate Honors Convocation for the Queens College graduating class of 2023. Thank you for joining us. It is truly wonderful to see the families and friends of the students who will be honored here tonight. My name is Dan Lee, and I am the chair of the college's Committee on Honors and Awards and your host for the evening. We will now begin the baccalaureate procession. Arriving here on stage will be the president and administrators of Queens College and the winners of college-wide awards. Arriving from the entrance of the auditorium will be Queens College faculty members, followed by the summa cum laude, magna cum laude, and cum laude graduates. Please join me in a round of applause for our outstanding faculty members and students. Uh, please be seated, everyone. I would like to introduce you to key members of the college administration, as well as our two speakers. Members of the audience, please hold your applause until all introductions have been completed. Seated here to my right are Tenzin Namgyal, our student speaker, Frank H. Wu, the president of Queens College, Noel Hankin, our keynote speaker, Jay Hershenson, vice president for communications and marketing and senior advisor to the president, Jennifer Jarvis, vice president for student affairs and enrollment management, Kate Pechinkina, 
Dean of Social Sciences, Daniel Weinstein, Dean of Mathematics and Natural Sciences, William McClure, Dean of Arts and Humanities, and Bobby Cabuto, Dean of the School of Education. Seated to my left are uh, Patricia Price, Interim Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs, Taruna Sadhu, Director of Honors and Scholarships, Lori Dorf, Vice President for Institutional Advancement, Jerima DeWeese, Chief Diversity Officer, Jeffrey Rosenstock, Assistant Vice President for External and Governmental Relations, Joseph Lochran, Chief Financial Officer, Troy Hahn, Chief Information Officer, Zico Kursik, Assistant Vice President for Facilities. Megan Healy, Interim Associate Provost for Academic and Faculty Affairs, and Natalia Holtzman, Interim Associate Provost for Innovation and Student Success. I now invite President Frank H. Wu to wel offer his welcome and congratulations. Good evening, friends. What a pleasure to welcome you to our annual baccalaureate convocation in this beautiful Colden Auditorium on a magnificent summer day to celebrate the wonderful accomplishments of all of our students. I want to offer my appreciation to those who have made this evening possible for us to enjoy, especially the members of my cabinet, the College Committee on Honors and Awards, led by Chair Professor Dan Lee, the Office of Honors and Scholarships, Campus Events and Commencement, Student Affairs, Public Safety, Information Technology, Communications and Marketing, Buildings and Grounds, and the Aaron Copeland School of Music, and most of all, our terrific students. We're delighted. We are just delighted to be able to gather here in person to recognize your perseverance and your success. Each of you, individually, who we honor represent the very best of Queens College. Your unwavering dedication and hard work and commitment to excellence have truly set you apart. The honors you receive tonight, whether it be Latin honors, departmental prizes, or awards from Queens College or the City University of New York system, attest to your academic prowess and your ability to rise to the challenge of higher education. Your achievements here at Queens College are just the beginning of your journey toward realizing all of your dreams. As you embark on new challenges ahead, continue to embrace your passion, your curiosity, and your drive. Let these values guide you as you navigate your many future endeavors. I have every confidence and no doubt that you will continue to make progress and meaningful contributions to our diverse democracy. Whatever path you choose, I urge you to always remember and live up to the motto of Queens College, we learn so that we may serve. As a special treat this year, we will be offering all the honorees a new opportunity when you are introduced. Here in the world's borough, we know that many of you are pursuing that proverbial American dream and are the first in your families, whether on these shores or anywhere, to have the chance to benefit from higher education. <laughs> to honor you then, as we gather with your family, your relatives, we would like each of you to have the chance to say your own name as you, were, as you would say it, as you prefer, respecting your identities as you define yourselves. Because we want you to be recognized for who you are, and this is the best means for us to do so. If, however, you prefer to have your name announced, Dr. Lee is standing by, and any student who wishes for any reason for their name to be called may present an index card with it written phonetically for Dr. Lee to read. On behalf 
of the faculty and the staff and all of us at Queens College, please accept my warmest congratulations to you and to everyone who helped you along the way. You have made all of us so proud. Thank you, President Wu. Now it is my pleasure to introduce our baccalaureate speaker for the graduating class of 23. Tenzin Namgyel is one of our two winners of the Paul Clapper Scholarship, our mo most prestigious award. Tenzin, please step forward to receive your certificate from President Wu. Tenzin is graduating summa cum laude with a double major in philosophy and political science. She has worked with the Night News, was the treasurer of the Political Science Club, and participated in NYPIRG, the New York Public Interest Research Group, spearheading a voter registration drive here on campus. She hopes to pursue a PhD in philosophy. Welcome, Tenzin. I would like to echo the sentiments of everyone here and issue hearty congratulations to my fellow 23 graduates. I hope you all feel immense joy and fulfillment during this occasion, as I certainly do. I'm actually shaking right now. Um, it is because of your hard work, the support of faculty, and our families that have led us to this achievement. I am of Tibetan heritage, the daughter of Tibetan refugees who immigrated to the United States in the late 1990s in the wake of China's illegal occupation of Tibet. Like many Tibetans, my parents instilled in me the importance of political advocacy, which is why I have earned my degrees in political science and philosophy. For each one of us here, however, that has earned a degree, there is a student who will not graduate and who is missing from this ceremony. What are the causes, you may ask, that have led to the absence of students in the 2023 graduating class? Decades of divesting from CUNY, which has only been exacerbated by the pandemic. This divestment looks like students dropping out because services they need, like financial aid, advising, tutoring, and counseling, are in short supply. It looks like raising tuition fees while cutting courses. Students are left without the classes they need to graduate on time. These necessary classes are then canceled abruptly and adjunct faculty are laid off. Departments rely on underpaid and overworked adjunct faculty to replace full-time faculty whose tenure track positions disappear when they retire or leave. Tenured faculty and staff are leaving in frustration over low pay, unmanageable workloads, and lack of promotion opportunities. Those who remain are missing the colleagues who used to share their workload and are doing more work for the same pay, which means a pay cut. During the pandemic, we became alienated from our everyday lives, and our return to campus has been insufficient to meet the circumstances. These past few years have melted into each other. I remember going out in my wool coat to buy snacks from CVS. Uh, while walking, I felt my entire body coated in something indescribably discomforting. I had no idea what this was until I looked at everyone else in their shorts and tank tops and realized I was hot. I remember thinking, Oh, so that's what warmth feels like. I had stayed inside for so long that I didn't realize the seasons had changed. I think that feeling, that inability to discern one day with another, one month with another, and one season with another, stayed with me long after the initial restrictions. There will be people walking around with pamphlets. You will see them again on commencement day. I encourage you to grab a pamphlet and speak to them about what we can do to ensure that next year there is not a single missing graduating student. I want to end by marking this occasion as a deeply significant one in light of our colleagues who are not here to celebrate it with us. I wish for us to hold on to the joy that comes with entering new phases and to sit with it. But do not forget that this experience is only a singular point in our lives. 
although it is an important one, for many a world changer. Nevertheless, we cannot be reduced to this point. Our lives will hold many of them, each one a different chapter in our stories. We will bear witness to many firsts, many lasts, and hopefully many do-overs. But no single point, no single chapter, can ever serve as a measure of who we are. In recognition of CUNY's history and walking in the footsteps of former graduates, I am reminded of the words of Townsend Harris. Open the doors to all. Let the children of the rich and the poor take their seats together and know of no distinction save that of industry, good conduct, and intellect. Thank you. Thank you, Tenzin, and congratulations. Now I would like to call President Wu back to the podium for the awarding of the Queens College Presidential Medal. Each year at the baccalaureate convocation as president, I have the pleasure and honor of presenting the Queens College President's Medal. That is this institution's highest administrative honor. We give it to one very deserving individual at this ceremony. Tonight, we honor Noel Henkin. Noel Henkin attended Queens College in the 1960s, during a time when the campus community was deeply involved in the historic civil rights movement. As an undergraduate, he attended a campus talk given famously here by the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. An experience that he shared during the college's 2022 documentary of that moment. Dr. King's speech would serve as a motivation for many of his own future endeavors. Noel graduated in 1968 with a degree in sociology. And after graduation, he and a few of his friends started a social group called The Best of Friends. Together, they launched the very first black-owned discotheques throughout New York City back in 1971. These clubs were such a hit that they continued to grow throughout the decade with the disco craze. They created ultimately five clubs in all. The flagship in Manhattan called Leviticus became internationally known and was visited by A-list celebrities of the era. Elizabeth Taylor, Rick James, Madonna. These clubs paved the way for Studio 54, Saturday Night Fever, and the nationwide explosion of disco in the late 1970s. Noel Hankin would later publish memoirs entitled After Dark, which offered a first-hand account of his memorable experiences during the height of the discotheque era. Then, when the disco craze subsided in the 1980s, Noel shifted to a new career in advertising, first at the famed firm of Ogilvy and Mather, where he managed some of the most successful brands in the world, household names. Then later with Miller Brewing Company and Moe Hennessy. At Miller, Noel created the National Black Scholarship Fund with the backing of major corporations. That fund, which is now known as the Thoroughgood Marshall College Fund, supports scholarships for students who attend public, historically black colleges and universities, HBCUs. To date, the Thoroughgood Marshall College Fund has raised over $300 million in scholarships and prepared 260,000 students for career success through leadership training. Noel's work at the Thoroughgood Marshall College Fund was recognized by former President Bill Clinton. And Noel was asked to serve on the advisory council for HBCUs during the Clinton administration. And he met with the president on an annual basis to identify educational priorities for those institutions. One of the most important that he named was to continue the use of Pell Grants to provide need-based financial aid to students attending college. So many of our students today 
benefit from that very same Pell Grant. After his time at Miller, Noel returned to New York City and went to serve as Vice President of Moe Hennessy from 1997 until his retirement in 2010. That's a company with an unusually inclusive approach to diverse markets and a record of funding civil rights organizations. Noel himself has given his time to many nonprofits that aim to help underserved constituencies of New York City. For example, he was a trustee of the CUNY Construction Fund, former chair of the New York Urban League, and is a lifetime member of the NAACP. In recognition of his service to humanity through his impressive achievements in the arts, in culture, in business, philanthropy, and education, an acknowledgement of his use of his own education for the common good. We are humbled to be able to present Noel Henkin with the Queens College President's Medal. I have dreams, but I never dreamed that I would receive this type of honor. President Wu, I thank you. This is a very proud and honored moment for me because it was not easy for me to get out of Queens College. <laughs> More about that later. But I want to thank the entire administration at Queens College, especially to my good friend, Jay Hershenson, who's a tremendous asset not just to Queens College and CUNY, but to New York. Now to the graduating class. I have only one word for you. Congratulations. <laughs> and just out of curiosity, how many of you, by a show of hands, uh, are the first one to receive a bachelor's degree in their family? Wow, that's impressive. And, and by a show of hands, how many of you are immigrants? Wow. I'm an immigrant, too, by the way. I'm an immigrant, too. Congratulations to you all. That's very impressive. This is, uh, you are really uh, exciting to me, because when I went to Queens College, we didn't have this type of uh, student body. Uh, it's become more international, and that's impressive to see. As I walked across the campus this evening, kind of fast because traffic made me a little late, <laughs> something unusual happened. My mind raced back to several memorable occasions when I was a student here. I heard Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. speak in the same auditorium as President Wu mentioned. I remember learning about President Kennedy's assassination while walking past Remsen Hall. I saw a group of students gathered. They were crying, and I asked what happened. And that's what I learned. And I remember the surreal sadness that fell over the campus when the world learned that fellow student Andrew Goodman was murdered in Mississippi, along with James Cheney and Michael Schwerner. It made me want to do something. So in the spirit of we learn so that we may serve, I decided to sign up for a QC program called Jamaica Tutorial, where we tutored Jamaica high school students twice a week. It wasn't much, but it made me feel like I was contributing. Some years later, while at Miller Brewing Company, I used this experience to help create Milwaukee Tutorial and a similar program for younger kids called Homework First. While at Queens, I joined an off-campus fraternity and discovered a new world of parties with fun people all over the New York area. I got carried away. I went to too many parties and neglected my courses. I'm sure you can't identify with that. I had to take classes at night to work my way back to matriculation. 
Only then did I notice that my fraternity brothers also went to parties, but they all seemed to be doing fine academically. That's when I learned the concept of balance. And it's something that you can't do anything in this world without balance. Through the years, I've had many different experiences. They gave me insights and capabilities that came in handy down the road. I believe every experience has value and has the potential to benefit you, sometimes in unexpected ways. And I'll give you a couple of examples. After I graduated from Queens, I helped form a social club that gave dances with live bands. We pooled the names and addresses of all our contacts into a master mailing list and collected more addresses at every dance we gave. After a few years, our mailing list was 3,000 strong. In 1970, I started working for Young and Rubicam Advertising on Madison Avenue in Midtown. Occasionally, I'd stop for a drink after work with friends or coworkers, and I noticed that black folks didn't stick around after work. They went uptown or to the outer boroughs to socialize. They didn't relate to the bars and clubs in Midtown. With the growing number of African Americans in Midtown, I saw an opportunity to provide social, a social outlet for them. So I called an emergency meeting of my partners in the social club, and together we decided to promote an after work set with dancing and recorded music every Thursday at a club called the Ginza. The proprietor wanted a $1,000 bar guarantee to allow us to bring in our crowd and collect the admission fee at the door. $1,000 back then is valued at $7,500 today. We agreed to the deal because we had a secret weapon that gave us confidence. That weapon was our mailing list with 3,000 names. Our first after work discotheque was on February 11, 1971. I doubt we would have committed to the $1,000 guarantee without that mailing list. Our Thursday after work discotheque far exceeded our expectations. So we gradually added more nights at the Ginza and four more venues. By 1972, we had nine weekly discotheques at five different venues, all in midtown Manhattan. We were netting over a million dollars a year, and several competitors quickly emerged. However, we remained dominant because our events were consistently high quality, which helped create loyal followers. So between our discos and those of our competitors, the discotheque craze spread like wildfire within the black communities across the country. A few years later, the disco craze became an international phenomenon. Our discotheques were surprisingly diverse. We primarily attracted black patrons, but we also had white, Hispanic, and Asian customers. You would see everyone at our clubs, from CEOs to mailroom clerks, Rick James to Elizabeth Taylor, Arthur Ashe to Madonna, Nick Nolte to Grace Jones. It's interesting to note that when you step onto the dance floor, your station in life becomes irrelevant. We treated everyone, therefore, with the same high level of respect. Our mailing list and network of followers formed the core of our patrons and enabled our success. When we compiled that mailing list, we had no idea it would become so valuable. Here's a second example, my last example, of how experiences today can become important down the road. Years, years after I left the discotheque business, I worked for Moet Hennessy USA, supplier of a portfolio of prestigious brands including Hennessy, Belvedere, Dom Perignon, and Vu Clicquot. I recognized that the brand managers were developing marketing plans with little insight into African American, Hispanic, and Asian consumers, even though these consumers were crucial to our success. Our brand managers were so busy Legitimately, it was difficult for them to spend meaningful time in the marketplace where sales and consumption take place. So they relied on market research to develop their marketing and merchandising plans. Now, based on my experience with the diversity of patrons in the discotheques, I could see that our sales reps who sell to individual bars, restaurants, and clubs knew much more about these environments than anyone else. 
Their insights were uniquely valuable and more comprehensive than the information brand managers gleaned from their research reports. But brand managers did not seek input from sales reps. Perhaps there was a bit of NIH at play here that's not invented here. Brand managers are quite a bit senior to sales reps, and many felt it was unnecessary to listen to what sales reps had to say. As a result, brand managers made too many assumptions about multicultural consumers and wound up with plans that were sometimes irrelevant, ill-timed, or missed the mark in terms of message. I recognized that brand managers needed to value distributor sales reps' input, so I organized an annual conference where each brand manager presented their plan for the following year to a room full of sales reps from across the country. To ensure that the brand managers acted on the input they received, I invited the brand manager's boss, the head of marketing, as well as the president of the company. Never before did brand managers pay that much attention to the opinions of sales reps. It didn't take long for Moet Hennessy to become known as the undisputed leader in the industry in terms of multicultural insights and know-how. Licensees, that's bars and retailers, anyone who has a license to sell alcohol, they quickly realized that any program coming out of Moet Hennessy would be effective and help them to make more money. I have many other examples, but I think you get my point. Many of your experiences help to develop skills, capabilities, and insights that can benefit you down the road. It may not enable you to see around corners, but it can improve your outcomes. Whatever task you have in front of you, embrace it. Have fun with it. Every experience has value. I believe when you dedicate yourself to every task and embrace it fully, the insights, capabilities, and skills often come in handy down the road. For the next phase of your life's journey, I encourage you to remember a quote from Leon Nicknaw. That's an anagram, Leon Nicknaw, a Queens College alumnus who majored in sociology. He wisely said, and I quote, embrace every task and recognize that unexpected opportunities often materialize when you work hard and with passion, end quote. So please enjoy the journey that's ahead of you folks. I look forward to reading about many of you as you achieve great things. I will now introduce the other award winners who are present this evening. Uh, in the order in which they are listed in the program. Students, please rise when I, you hear your name, and then as I introduce you, please proceed to the front of the stage around this side over here. And you will receive your award from President Wu and have your picture taken with him. First, help me welcome Andrea Mariza Garcia, our commencement speaker for 2023, and the second winner of the Paul Clapper Scholarship. Andrea is graduating summa cum laude with a major in political science and a minor in legal studies. Andrea has interned in the offices of State Senator John Liu, Senator Charles Schumer, and U.S. Representative Grace Meng. She also interned with the Central American Refugee Center, helping provide free legal services for immigrants, and after graduation, Andrea plans to work as a paralegal and apply to law school in the fall with the goal of becoming an immigration attorney. The next several awards are from the QCRA, the Queens College Retirees Association. This year, the QCRA is honoring their president, Elizabeth Lowe. The award named in her honor goes to Aaron Fu. Aaron is graduating summa cum laude from Macaulay Honors College, majoring in communication science and disorders, and minoring in psychology and honors in the social sciences. Aaron was vice president of the Speech, Language, and Hearing Association, vice president of campus affairs for the Macaulay Scholars Council, conducted research in the bilingual literacy lab, and participated in the CUNY Reading Corps. 
Next year, Aaron will pursue a master's in speech pathology. The Wilbur E. Gilman Scholarship goes to Elizabeth Durand. Elizabeth graduated summa cum laude with a major in English and a minor in honors in the humanities. As the mother of an autistic child, Elizabeth has served as a PTA president and member of the school leadership team and won an award for her advocacy for District 75 students. Elizabeth is currently earning a master's degree here at QC and plans to pursue a PhD in English. Aton <laughs> Rosner will receive the Charlotte and Harold Nag Scholarship. Aton is graduating summa cum laude with a major in political science and a minor in history. Aton participated in the National Society of Leadership and Success, the Philosophy Club, and the Pre-Law Association, and interned with the Justice of the Queens County Supreme Court. Aton will be attending law school in the fall. The Lucille Lindbergh Scholarship goes to Ariella Wang, who is a psychology major with a minor in health sciences, graduating summa cum laude with a perfect 4.0. Ariella works with children after school, mainly by coaching basketball, and she also volunteered at a hospital and participated in the Academic Senate. In the fall, she will begin an accelerated nursing program at SUNY Downstate. The Nancy Meltzer Scholarship goes to Stephanie Spilka, who is graduating summa cum laude with a double major in quantitative economics and mathematics and minors in computer science and honors in the social sciences. She is president of the Icaros Hellenic Orthodox Club, interned for QC's Tech Incubator, and worked as a teaching assistant and tutor for various courses. Stephanie will be working for J.P. Morgan Chase and also attending graduate school. She has already been accepted at Cornell and Stanford. <laughs> Lior Goldschmidt is the recipient of this year's Mardell Ogilvy Scholarship. Leora graduated magna cum laude with a major in biology and neuroscience and a minor in chemistry. Leora has pursued research in Doctor Who's neuromorphic computing lab and plans to attend graduate school. The Molly Weinstein Memorial Prize is awarded to graduating seniors who plan a career in college teaching. This year, there are four winners. The first winner is Christine Flores, a Spanish major who graduated summa cum laude. Christine was president of the Hispanic Club and was an Idente Youth Junior Professor. Christine plans to apply to PhD programs with the goal of becoming a professor of Latin American literature. The second winner of the Weinstein Prize is Rachel Brunner, a Macaulay Honors College mathematics major who is graduating magna cum laude. Rachel worked as a middle school math teacher and conducted math research during her time at Queens and plans to pursue a PhD in mathematics. The third winner of the Weinstein Prize is Diana Rodriguez, a chemistry major who graduated magna cum laude. As a participant in the Mark U. Star program, Diana worked in Professor Choi's lab, and in the fall, she will enter CUNY's PhD program in chemistry. <laughs> the winner of this year's Salman Hamdani Award is Daniel Fedida. Daniel is a biology and neuroscience major with minors in cities and social medicine, chemistry and, bio and biology, graduating summa cum laude. Um, Daniel is president of the Chemistry Honor Society and conducts research in Dr. Broomberg's lab and won a life-saving award from the Roslyn Fire Rescue Department. He will begin medical school in the fall. Our first winner of the A. Joseph Geist Law Fellowship is Dina Travis. 
who is a double major in history and economics, graduating summa cum laude. Dina won a Mary O'Connor Teaching Fellowship and was involved in several clubs on campus and will begin law school in the fall. Our second winner of the Geist Law Fellowship is Ariane Bautista, who is a Macaulay Honors English major and Honors in Humanities minor, graduating summa cum laude. Ariane volunteered as a writing mentor for high school students and will attend law school in the fall. The Jeffrey Vigliarolo Memorial Scholarship goes to Destiny Fierro. Destiny is graduating magna cum laude with a major in political science and intends to apply to law school in the fall. The Amy and Judy Sturm Memorial Scholarship goes to Ann Huang. Ann is a Macaulay Honors double major in media studies and film studies with a minor in business and liberal arts graduating summa cum laude with a perfect 4.0. She is currently in the Accelerated Master's Program in Media Studies here at QC. The Mark and Zoe Belth Memorial Award winner is Gabrielle Sarubo, an English education major graduating summa cum laude with a perfect 4.0. After graduation, Gabrielle is planning to teach and begin a master's in English at QC. The Alumni Association of Queens College Award goes to Labiba Kershid, an English education major graduating summa cum laude with a perfect 4.0. Labiba will continue in the accelerated master's program here at QC. Allison Keene is the recipient of the Jeffrey B. Berman Memorial Award. Allison is graduating magna cum laude in psychology. Allison is battling cystic fibrosis and plans to continue QC at QC studying elementary education. Yisroel Goldberg is receiving the Saul Weprin Memorial Scholarship. Yisrael is a magna cum laude graduate in political science. He founded New York Students for Biden and spent the fall 2020 semester working for the campaign in Florida. Since then, Yisrael has worked for Adrian Adams, Carolyn Maloney, and the Pennsylvania Democratic Party. And after graduation, he intends to pursue a master's in public administration. The winner of the QC Women's Club Award is Alexandra Goldblatt. Who is a double major in biology and neuroscience and psychology. Graduating summa cum laude with a perfect 4.0. Alex Alexandra was president of the Chabad Club and vice president of the research club conducted research in the Dennehy Lab, and plans to apply to medical school in the fall. The second winner of the Women's Club Award is Viola Clifton, who graduated summa cum laude in film studies. Viola is starting her own film production company and plans to continue her film education. The Harvard Sitkoff Civil Rights Award goes to Anna Orellana, who is a double major in sociology and Latin American studies, graduating summa cum laude. Anna was the operations manager of the Sikh Social Justice Collaborative, as well as a Sikh peer mentor. <laughs> a 
Elizabeth Georgiou is this year's Cheney Goodman Schwerner Prize winner. Elizabeth is majoring in communication science and disorders with a minor in psychology, graduating summa cum laude. Elizabeth held leadership positions in the Speech, Language, and Hearing Association, the Icaros Hellenic Society, the Gender, Love, and Sexuality Association, and the Dance Union, and plans to obtain a master's degree in speech pathology. The Donald Kirkpatrick Scholarship winner is Godarv Kaur, who is a Macaulay Honors student majoring in political science and minoring in philosophy, graduating summa cum laude with a perfect 4.0. Godarv created the Glamour Gals program, writing hundreds of letters to seniors in nursing homes during the pandemic. Godarv plans to apply to law school next year. The winner of the Roarers Memorial Award is B.B. Razak, an accounting major who graduated magna cum laude. B.B. volunteered with the Volunteer Income Tax Program, and in the fall, she will begin a master's program in accounting and information systems here at QC. Our first winner of the Creativity Award is Vashali Patra, who graduated summa cum laude with a major in media studies and a minor in honors in the social sciences. Vashali was praised by faculty for her skill in cinematography. Our second winner of the Creativity Award is Sophia Nath, who graduated magna cum laude with a major in design and a minor in drama and theater. With two other students, Sophia started the Tet a Tet project that asks the Q QC community to record a voice message talking about a story or experience and then animates those stories and posts them on YouTube. Sophia plans to pursue an MFA degree. This year's Joe and Carol Brostick Scholarship goes to Nima Patel, who is graduating magna cum laude with a triple major in biology and neuroscience, psychology and biology, and five minors. <laughs> Nima founded the Mental Health Association at QC and worked in Dr. Rinaldi's lab. She plans to apply to medical school in the fall. The Michael Rezin Prize goes to Tahir Ahad, who is graduating summa cum laude with a major in family and consumer sciences. Tahir was involved with the Muslim Student Association, the Bangladeshi Student Association, and NY Perg. The David Siret Scholarship goes to Sebastien Biron, who is a magna cum laude, gradu graduating magna cum laude with a major in history and minors in honors in the humanities and honors in the social sciences. Sebastian was president of GenVote, and in the fall, he will begin a master's program in history at the University of Cambridge with the goal of later earning a PhD. Our first winner of the Richard Covert Memorial Scholarship is Jahi Murray, who is graduating cum laude as a double major in elementary and childhood education and sociology. Jahi was part of the Sikh Young Men's Alliance and plans to either return to QC for a master's degree or work in counseling. Our second winner of the Covert Scholarship is Elizabeth Abreu Plasencia, 
who is, a who is double majoring in environmental studies and urban studies with a minor in urban planning and graduating summa cum laude. <laughs> Elizabeth co-authored an article published in an academic journal and served as secretary and vice president of the Hispanic Club. She intends to pursue a graduate degree in urban planning. This concludes the awards segment of our program. On behalf of the Committee on Honors and Awards, the faculty, and the administration, I congratulate all of our excellent award winners. It is now time to recognize the three categories of recipients of general college honors, cum laude, magna cum laude, and summa cum laude. These students will come up, to this, come up to the stage where they'll be acknowledged individually. Those on stage who have already received an award should remain seated. We will begin by recognizing the students who are graduating summa cum laude, that is, with GPAs of 3.9 and higher. Please line up here to my left, and when you reach the stage, hand your index card to Anne Marie here, who's standing next to me, and speak your name into one of these two microphones you see here on stage. Or, if you prefer, you can hand your index card to me and I will announce your name instead. You will then walk across the stage to shake hands with President Wu. Our professional photographer will be there to take your picture and the photographs will be available for purchase later. Uh, members of the audience, please hold your applause until all of the summa cum laude graduates have been introduced. We will then congratulate them as a group. Caesar Nocum Avillar Jr. <laughs> Carlo Marcello Schimenti. Sarah Mae Kupferstein. <laughs> Michelle Nebe. Shantae McLeod. <laughs> Salma Khan. <laughs> Bianca Ivicota. <laughs> Brenda Condi. Mazarul Mahi. Michael Locasano. Melissa Roth. Ezra Pierre Anton. Michael William Pecora. Amanda Esperanza Riobo. Taina Mahia. The last case. Marcella Grancarek. Frank Wiederhold. <laughs> Alyssa Saray Aviles. <laughs> Maya Antoinette Hussein. Ariana Lydia Vargas. <laughs> Emily Hink. <laughs> Kelly Herrera. <laughs> Emily Martinez.
Jeffrey Jones. Dominic Thomas Avalon. Sayed Ali Hassan. Yaya Rahimi. Michelle Morales. Celida Guillermo. Jaylene Rojas. Alexandria Williams. Zachary Sale. Emily Comboy. Salvatore Chico. Angelo Regidor. Yael Torchino. Benjamin Kluger. Slowatsky. Marie Antoinette Fernandez. <laughs> Wilhelmina Cruz Cost. James Smith Dudding. Miguel Carl. Leora Kaimov. Daniel Yusupov. Avitali Sakov. Lauren Chattergoon. Rahima Javed. Tasneem Islam. Carmela Miller. Kayla Abraham. Christopher Blyka. Kennedy Davis Neely. Courtney Eisler. Rachel Lacken. Mackenzie Taller. Yael Laura Bayless. Average Carr. Sandra Bala Eric Grigolite Kasson Gilmore Osman Khan Notion Azimi. Ben 
this year. Christina Rim. Tiffany Angeli Singh. Sandra Perez. Eliana Hernandez. Emilio Aguirre. Gabrielle Fenord Alexis. Al Shaquilly. Angela Blystone. Kaziah Prasad. Zainab Rashid. Kaylin Ruth Marie Hines. Gav Meiri. Peter Giulio Minetti. <laughs> Ashley Chang. Karina Mambode. Teresa Liu. Kevin Cardenas. Xu Qingmei. Rong Ling. Michelle Latanzio. Aviva Wagner. Aviva Bumgardner. Constantina Antoniadis. Hope Sealy. Rosalidia Caputo. Angela Sanchez. Sarah Marmel. Clentina Petcole. Nicole Aziz. Sarita Heller. Alexandra Tawil. Kelly Rachel Herrera. Kinza Kamal. Let's give a round of applause for all of our summa cum laude graduates. We will next recognize students who are graduating magna cum laude. Their GPAs range from 3.75 to 3.9. Also, out of respect for our graduates, we kindly request that you remain seated until the very end of the ceremony and keep any conversation at a low volume. And also, let me just remind you what the, the procedure is as you come to the stage. So you'll, have a, you'll bring your card, you'll either give it to Anne Marie and then proceed to these, one of these two mics or you hand it to me and I will pronounce, pronounce your name. Elizabeth Singh Johnson. Magdalene Marillo. Monica Shu.
Karishma Natasha Hardeen. Yahweh Leo. Sanisha Lopez. Claudia Chavarria. Jasmine Castro Gabriel. Monica Caesar. Alicia Amatia. Juliet Fonsi. Daniela Rosselli. Anna Mulligan. Cindy Liu. Lachmi Ramjit. Paolo Cortez. Carla Vicuña. Carlos Enrique Montoya Salazar. Jason Wong. Vanessa Vistena. Yuval Akiva. Swag Charlie Dill. Zihan Rahman. Caitlin Valentin. Tanvir Hassan. Ravital Hamatian. Marion Rose Wegener. Chloe Certain. Sophia Tapalis. Demi Kapitanakis. Amber Williams. Maria Jose Espinel Vascones. Liu Pei. Jonathan Ortega. Benton Bihari. Bisma Jelani. Lauren Jacopino. Devora Young. Albert Wheeler. Maggie Kelly. Fanny Noriega. Amaya Somerville. Sun Fan Wong. Sojan Wu Wu. Ahona Islam. Kayla Castellanos.
Shane Ubani. Lauren Hernando. Mercy Chukitarko. Marissa Fiaco. Jenica Ann Benarsi. I just remind you that we're holding most of our applause till the end. Just. <laughs> Chaima Salim. Joshua Nektalov. Nadira Tilhu. Roxanne Rosario. Deidre Jordan Long. Victor Chikin Wong. Brady Elivet Ortiz. Sharmila Basdale. Jessica Eng. Wendy Bermudez. Usmanova Shagio. Susan Chen. Andres Jimenez. Donna Elizabeth Arnau. Alyssa Ayala. Rieger Pantazzi. Nathan Daniel. Sophia Keshawars. Sabrina Benziken. Sarah Blonder. Priscilla Lulu Lutartio. Mohamed Sharouk. Christina Gonzalez. Dante Antelandi. Nalia Veloz. Bamia Qureshi. Nishat Begum. Hanya Gori. Jasmine Gonzalez. Siobhan Burnett. Augustina Nicole Harris. Nisa Tabasa. Maria Valentini. <laughs> Olif Noor. <laughs> Kayla Joan Bauer. <laughs> Yanni Lee. Sarah Song. William Murphy. Divine Rose Flotibles Pamulaiko. 
All right, let's give a big round of applause to congratulate all the students graduating magna cum laude. We will next recognize students who are graduating cum laude. Their GPAs range from 3.50 to 3.75. Again, let's hold our applause until all of the cum laude graduates have been introduced, and then we'll congratulate them as a group. And once again, I, I please ask everyone to remain seated and uh, relatively quiet. Arlene Canario. Sylvester Effion. Samantha Pereira. Don Adams. Tanya Jones. Nazneen Pirani. Daniel Varghese. Natalie Zeng. Marufa Mim. Jennifer Gill. Joselle Suniko. Adrian De La Cruz. Jason Ruda. Abdul Wahab. Umar Kagzi. Brianna Checo. <laughs> Tiffany Ng. Alice Yu. Laura Florian. Sharona Maradi. Ariella Kohanan. Nima Lama. Christopher Martinez Salazar. Cindy Lema. Minuka Rai. Kamna Raut. Raina Kirschnitz. Alfonso Valentin. Michal Ness. Lauren Marie Francioni. Florence Maxine Beltrano Pill. Sadia Chowdhury. Shanta Duda. Natalia Manrique. Catherine Williams. Kavinja Harrell. Yanita Chunilov. Fashad Hosini. Wakas Ahmad. <laughs> Stacy Ann Martindale. Ashley Bella Wu. Erica Peraza. Suhail Alam.
Sasha Budram. Gabriel. Gabriel Chandra. Shweta Bhatnagar. <laughs> Katrina Wong. Papri Chaudhuri. Fariha Rashid. Oguswav Mitrega. Daniel Fernando Gomez. Alexis Taylor LaRocca. Brian Lee. Shruti Patel. Harrison Chen. Rania Tayeb. Gentiana Derheme. Uh, Nicholas Lee. Brenda Daniels Brockenberry. <laughs> Ali Hussein. Sonia Martinez. Maria Claudia de la Vega. Anurada Kampata. Ravina Prashad. Jada Sky Schoenfeld. Jamila Khan. Sadia Ishad. Rihanna Headley. <laughs> Ashley Miller. Soraya Basco Mahidin. I love you, Nanai. Joshua J. Lee. My parents are here! <laughs> Rebecca June Haruni. Hanan Amari. Diana Lachman, I love you, Jenna. <laughs> Hannah Tu. <laughs> Vasanti Ramdihal. <laughs> Ty Machado. <laughs> Kayla Smith. Isabella Labar. Jajana Toussaint. <laughs> Ashley Arlene Bencosme. Juan Guzman. Alicia Jean. Naraya Michelle Green. We did it, Mama. Vanessa Passos Vergara. Vastanya Antoine. Jillian Merced. Jeff Cotta. Shriyansh Tripathi. And more you sing. Elaine Lantigua. 
Danielle Marie Alejandro. Julia Agnello. Andrew Gervasi. Lisbeth Zamorano. Shira Friedman. Gary Banish Slokowski. Constantine Venetis. Cynthia Jahan. Stephanie Castellan. Brina Weiss. Mylon. Diana Patino. <laughs> Anna Segelnik. Ellie Martin. <laughs> Abdul Khalik. Su <laughs> Cheng. Magdalena Danishuk. Anastasia Camano. <laughs> Athena Nicolaros. Rowena Gordon. Serena Ahmed. Jasmine Acosta. Rihanna Leach. Sable Wilson McCray, let's go! <laughs> Kelly Saw. Hamiza Prashara. Diana Hernandez. Jacqueline Corman. <laughs> Natalie Sandoval. <laughs> Morgan McGee. <laughs> no, no, no. Daniel Cajas. <laughs> Nicholas Ariel Morello. Farzana Munir. Brittany Geraldine Gayo Quintanilla. Sabrina Armigan. <laughs> Tiffany Robinson. Nelson Concepcion Infante. <laughs> Daniel Murdahayev. Jane Juarez. Monique Nurse. Sean Neve Brown. Evelyn Denise Alvarez Ramos, para ustedes. Tanuru Osa. Alexandra Danielle Sandoval. Nicholas Soria. Nurulan Fakhir. Danielle Shannon Hustlin. Daniela Hessing. Michaela Marie Caldero. I love you, Ella! <laughs> D. 
Dina Shelbourne Denard. I love you, baby. Brian Ricky Satrahan. Samantha Page Constantino. Gulsha Honkildiva. Rachel Canino. Okay, let's give a round of applause to all the students graduating Kumo Kumo. I would now like to recognize and offer thanks to those members of the audience who are donors of some of the prizes that have been awarded this evening. After the recessional, they are invited to meet with the recipients of their prizes on stage and be photographed with them. Please give them a round of applause to thank them for their generosity. And finally, let's thank the friends and family of our honors graduates who have come out tonight to support them. Our students could not have succeeded in the classroom without your love and support. Thank you. You are great tonight. This concludes the baccalaureate ceremony. Please remain in your seats until the platform party and the faculty have exited. Graduates, family, and friends are all invited to reception immediately afterward uh, in the atrium of the music building. On behalf of my colleagues, I wish you all good fortune in the exciting years ahead. Good night. Thank you.